Okay, let's have a look at speciation. All right, and in particular, the part of speciation, clinal variation. Okay, so speciation is basically what it sounds like. It is the formation of new species, evolutionary speaking. So it is a lineage splitting event. And what that means is that in the evolutionary tree, it's forming two new branches, um, which produces two or more separate species. So it is a branching point on the phylogenetic tree. So phylogenetic is another word to describe the evolutionary tree or time scale that we've talked about. Um, and that's a speciation event. So that causes two separate lineages from a common ancestor. So you can see in the pictures, we have the ancestral lineage. We have the speciation event, which causes the, two po the population to split into two species. Um, and you can see that this has occurred in the far right picture. It has occurred twice to cause three separate species. So here's an example of speciation events. And you can see the um, what characteristics has split the two groups. OK, so up here you can see hair versus no hair post-orbital fenestrate. Now, I can't tell you exactly what that means, but it does mean something to do with the bony structure around the eye. And I think it means it has, I'm not sure even. Okay, so gene flow species relationships. Now, we know that a species is capable of all individuals interbreeding. That's how we define a species. So gene flow essentially just involves the transfer of genes from one generation to the next within a population. So it's basically it's just genes flowing through breeding. OK, so gene flow occurs within a species. Now, why is this important? Because speciation occurs when gene flow between two populations stops. So you can see up the top we have our homogenous or all the same ancestral population. We have a splitting event. Um, something happens which causes this population to start to develop differently until it becomes firstly diff two different races, then two different subspecies, and then two different species. Okay, And you can see how gene flow becomes reduced as you go down, um, down the picture until between the two species there is no gene flow. And that means that they can't um, breed. Or interbreed. Okay, so we talked about race and subspecies just then. So a race is a more isolated population which are still genetically different, but they can interbreed. Okay, so they're like humans. So they're genetically that we can have variation, we can look different, have different characteristics or phenotypes, but we're still with essentially with we're the same species and we can produce fertile offspring. Okay, a subspecies is almost the step before forming two different species. So it's natural populations within a species that are slightly genetically different. Um, they can typically still breed, um, but there's, there's almost two branches that are starting to separate. Okay, so when we're thinking about speciation of population, uh, we all populations will be involved in at least one of the following. So um, clinal variation, hybrid belts or geographical isolation. Now completely ignore the two and three for the time being. We'll talk about that later. Uh, in class we'll talk about clinal variation. I'll just introduce you to it right now. Clinal variation you may have heard of. You may have heard of clines. It's the gradually changing adjacent populations. So it's a cline in essence is uh, forms of species that exhibit gradual phenotypic change or differences over a geographical area. So it's a group of species that um, go over an area. So they're in a similar kind of area and you can see this gradual phenotypic change. OK, so here's an example. Uh, you can see these sparrows here in North America. So they have subspecies or races which show this clinal variation. Um, and the clinal variation occurs in body size, plumage coloration, so the color, the size, and song characteristics. And you can see on the picture, if you look carefully, those subtle changes occurring. Okay, So you can see the difference in the coloring. And also you can note that the 
um, geographic closeness of them. Okay, so Klein is where you see that gradient occurring. All right, here's another one. You can see again the geographic um, where where the cline is occurring. So you can see geographically they're basically next to each other and you can see that phenotypic change occurring across the cline. All right, thanks for listening.